Hello my friends, we are back and here we have a Vino Temp wine cooler and we have a video on YouTube that shows you how to check a compressor and, and uh, install a solid state relay and we did it on this machine but now in this stage we're going to, we know the compressor is bad because we checked it out we're going to replace that compressor for the sake of making the video to show you how to replace a compressor. Now this is an LG compressor. It's about 300 BTUs, 134A, 115 volts. This is an Embraco EM30HR, 300 BTUs, 134A, 115 volts. I took this out of a Sub-Zero wine cooler and uh, it's been sitting around for a while but I did pinch the lines off to, to just lock out any air and moisture so the first thing we're going to do before we pull the old one out is we're going to make sure this runs we're going to pump it down and I'll show you how to pump down a compressor to check the valves and if this is okay then we will proceed and put it into that vino temp okay Let's begin to remove this compressor by first putting a line tap valve on the line so we can pull out the Freon. This already has a quarter inch spacer in there so this is going to go on there just nicely. So just loosen up these screws. This is a used uh, line tap valve. I use this to take out and remove the Freon. But if I were putting a, a valve on a system that was I was just going to recharge then I would use a new one because the seal I guess can work just so many times. And so put that on that way and get it started. And this is how you put a line tap valve and just remember before you pierce it um, to make sure it's in a position where you can put your gauge on. Okay, it's fine. Okay. So you see how that's sticking out down there where I can get my gauge, my hose on there. It's gonna we're gonna take it off anyway, but just saying if you're putting one of these on for permanent it scope it out for you before you pierce uh, the tubing you know under no circumstances are you or should you not allowed to but you should not vent freon into the air you know, it's like punching your mother in the face okay take your um, Refrigeration hose. This is my compound gauge. And hook that to here. Okay. Come on, give me a hard time. Maybe I should have angled it a little bit more. Okay, so that's on. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to hook up another hose. This is going to go to our recovery system on the intake. Like this. So that's going to suck it out through here. You'll watch it on the gauge through the system. And then we're going to hook our charging column up to the discharge. And that's what we're going to use this little hose for. And this wrench, as I spoke of before, we're going to put this on here. And all these little fittings, you can all buy this stuff at, oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. Should be on the, should be down here. Uh, you can buy all this stuff at any supply house refrigeration supply. You know, I use several, so 
snug that up. This is closed. I'm going to hook that into here. Like this. Uh, that this is plugged in. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to open up this. We're going to first we're going to pierce the line with the pin. The little needle in here. Okay. I'm going to back it off. You can see the gauge going up. Okay, that's enough. Now we turn on the recovery, open up the valve, and suck all the Freon out. Okay, we are down to 20 inches in the vacuum. It's holding in the vacuum, which means it's empty. So we can close all our valves, shut off the recovery, and start to disconnect things. So we can remove this charging column. See if we can see anything in there. I can just barely see any fray on in there. Now, according to this, the manufacturer, this takes 134A. It takes 2.3 ounces. I don't see anything in there. So maybe the reason why this compressor went bad was because it had a Freon leak. And we're going to find that out soon enough. Okay, now we'll remove the line tap valve and pull the compressor out and cut the lines. Okay, now we've taken the bolts out of the compressor. We're going to remove this ground wire here. And then we're just going to cut the lines and remove the compressor. Now, one thing I want to point out here, this is a process port. This is a low side dome. The process port and the suction line are the same on a low side dome. Down here, that's the discharge line. That's where the hot gas, compressed gas, comes out and goes in and through the condenser. So um, fortunately the compressor we're putting in it's not the exact one it's similar but it has both the high side and the low side on the right side of the compressor here and it make, should make it a little easier for us to put in. This is the filter dryer it's all 3 16 inch tubing we're going to cut this out and s sneak another new dryer in there and um, We'll do that now. So let's get a wire cutter here. You could use a tubing cutter on this, but it's it's easier for me to cut it and then put a tubing cutter on it after I so I can pull it out and, and do it right. Okay, so that's the suction line. And this is the discharge line. I don't see very well there because my there it goes. This is the discharge line. Okay, and this is the process, and we can leave that the way it is. So now, let's see if we can pull this out. Oh, there's a drain pan. And there's the compressor. One thing I want to make sure here is that this new compressor or this replacement compressor is the same size as the one that's in here. So let me get a check. Okay, this is the old compressor. This is the one that's going in. They're pretty much the same size. If I just raise this up on here, we got maybe a quarter of an inch lower on the replacement compressor which should be not be a problem fitting in there underneath that drain pan okay let's go to the next step okay okay so whenever you remove a compressor always pinch the lines so oil doesn't leak out because it will and it will make a mess 
Okay, we have now installed this other compressor in here and I had a problem with my camera so I couldn't actually show you how I welded or sweated in all the lines. I put a new filter dryer that's in here and um, I used a Supco solid state relay, an RO81. Okay, so this uh, compressor has been running now for a couple of hours with no Freon in it. This is what we do. We call this a sweep charge. It sucks out all the air and moisture in the system. You leave the high side open and, and it just uh, cleans up the air inside and uh, vaporizes any moisture that's in there. So now we're running at about 26 inches of vacuum that's uh, acceptable. The deeper a vacuum, the stronger the compressor. That's my opinion. Uh, you'll never get exactly 30 inches of mercury here, or 30 inches of vacuum, but this, this is, uh, if a compressor is in at least 25, 26 inches in a vacuum, it, you might have a bad pump. And it's possible that this pump could be bad. But So now the next uh, step for us to do is to weigh in the gas so we'll get our charging column and we're going to put 2.3 ounces of our 134a in here and then we're going to charge up the system and let it run and see uh, what the temperature looks like okay so here's our r134a tank and we we're going to put liquid into the bottom of the charging column we want 2.3 ounces of gas so let's see if we can get this in here I might have to heat up the tank and see going in. Okay, stand by. Okay, so I'm going to heat up this tank a little bit to raise the pressure inside to force it into the charging column. It shouldn't take long. I just want to get a little heat in there. That'll, that'll raise the pressure. As soon as I feel it, uh, the heat on the top, because this this tank is almost it's probably close to full, and it's the same temperature as the freon that's in the charging column. So you need to to raise the pressure a little bit to force it in. Okay, heated up the tank a little bit. Let's see what we got. Still, still not going in, so I'll try another trick. I'm going to relieve a little pressure inside the column. And then try to open it up and see what we can get. There it goes. One. One and a half, two, two and a half. It takes 2.3, but there's always a little bit of fray on that's left in the system. Anyway, that's that. Okay, so one more thing. I, I use this heat gun to uh, for basically heating the charging column to force the fray on into the system to raise the pressure but I have this little muffler uh, connection here I bought this at an auto store that I use to cover this surface here because it gets red hot and it, it could melt someone's floor or a piece of plastic or it could burn your tool bag so I always put this on here to, to protect the tools in my bag and it goes in there like that okay now that we know we have 2.3 ounces of Freon in here. We're going to hook this charging column up to our manifold. Then, as you can see, I use single gauge manifolds. I don't use the double ones. I don't have the room in my bags for them. Now, here's the trick. Do not put liquid 
into the low side of the system. It's for vapor only. So this charging column is inverted. It's upside down. I know there's the right amount of gas in there, so all I need to do is keep this upright and then purge it a little bit and then get the air out of the line and then open up the tank and let the Freon in. I can hear the compressor change in vibration here. You can hear it now. And once all that Freon is in there, we'll let that empty out. Sometimes this tank is starting to get really cold right now because you have a pressure drop here. And I'll use the heat gun to warm that up and force the Freon into the system. That may take a little while. We're running at about 12 pounds back pressure right now. So we'll let that balance out. Okay, everything's buttoned up. It took about 10 minutes for it to drop down from 72 degrees to 56, and then I reset the temperature to, uh, what's that, 56? We want to go down maybe to 45 at least, usually where we keep wine, white wine. It goes down as low as 40, and it goes back up to 65, so. I would say that this machine is done, it's ready, it's operational. Now the compressor just came back on. It's cold in there. It's ready, it's done. And that, my friends, is how you replace a compressor. Again, I apologize for not being able to show you sweating in all the lines and figuring that all out, but uh, uh, we have other videos that show how to replace a compressor. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.